giving your morning a shot in the arm. It's the AM Show. OK, almost 14 minutes after 7. Good to have you along this morning. Don't forget to vote in our poll as well. Do you believe immigration levels in New Zealand are too high? Uh, 84% so far. It's a massive result. Uh, www.amshow.co.nz. You can send us your feedback as well. Feedback at theamshow.co.nz. Do we need more immigration, perhaps? Is this the is this the is this the answer to New Zealand's economic woes over the years? Bring in more immigration. Uh, New Zealand's immigration trend has soared to a record high, as we know. Now, new figures out show a net gain of more than 71,000 migrants in the year to January. Now, that beats the previous annual record set a month earlier by more than 700 people. Of those arriving, around 44% were bound for Auckland. That's more than four times the number headed for Canterbury, which is the second most popular destination. They land. In Auckland, they stay in Auckland. So, does this mean the pressure on our housing market won't let up anytime soon? Executive Director of the Think Tank New Zealand Initiative, Oliver Hartwood, joins me now. Oliver, uh, welcome to the program. Good, good to have your company morning, this Duncan. morning. Well, what do you what, what what do you make of these numbers? Is it, is it a good or bad thing for New Zealand? Well, altogether, I would say it's a good thing for New Zealand because it shows that the country is very attractive. We are attracting people who want to be here because they have heard that New Zealand is doing well and we're doing spectacularly well compared to some other countries around the world. What I would say, though, is it is worth digging through the figures a bit deeper. And when you look at the 120,000 odd people arriving in New Zealand, 29% of them are Kiwis and Australians, so we couldn't really exclude them from uh, coming to New Zealand. 55% of them are on short-term visas, so these people are not very likely to stay in the long term and about only just about 20% of these 55% can stay longer. And so the figure is a little bit misleading. It is not an, a gain really of 71,000 people who are definitely going to be here forever. Um, some of that might actually correct over the next few years. Right. But when you look at the impact on the New Zealand economy overall, I mean, I agree with you. I largely think it's positive. But at the same time, you can't leave New Zealanders behind in this economic argument. You still have to have to build the roads and have the public transport and crucially build the houses, which if you look at the numbers, we're not keeping up, Oliver, are we? Absolutely, we have to build the houses and we have to build the houses for the sake of Kiwis and newcomers alike because we all need accommodation and we know that we've got a problem in the housing market. I would say we've got a crisis in the housing market and we have to fix that crisis. But what I would argue though is that we shouldn't allow the tail wagging the dog. So we shouldn't actually let immigration um, concerns and concerns about immigration levels dictate the way we are dealing with our housing market. We should do it the other way around. We should actually fix the housing market. We should fix that crisis. We should provide the country with the infrastructure that we need and then we can still talk about immigration policy afterwards. Yeah, but that, that, that horse has bolted, hasn't it? Because if you've seen the last four or five years when we started talking about this housing crisis, immigration every month, I think there's been something like 35 consecutive month-on-month -month records when it comes to immigration. So this government's on a sugar fix. It, it's, it's not going to come off this any time soon, well, yeah, is it? But, but if you're thinking back just maybe four or five years, that was a time when we lost about 40,000 New Zealanders every year. Now that figure is basically zero. So even back four or five years ago, um, we had a housing crisis and we weren't doing anything about it. So I think it is really unfair to blame the housing crisis entirely on migrants. It is actually something that we as a country haven't got right for a long time and it's really time to fix it now. But, 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 but isn't that the thing? Don't you have to join the policy? Don't you have to say, OK, we're into this immigration thing. We're an attractive country. We're doing well. We're at the top of very much at the top of the OECD rankings when it comes to economic growth. So we love this. We're enjoying the benefits of immigration, but we're not building alongside it, are we? We haven't planned that well at both central government and local government levels. That's exactly right, and that's why I think housing should be the number one priority for the New Zealand government now. It is really unacceptable that in Auckland, for example, ordinary um, New Zealanders simply can't afford a housing anymore, and that the average house now costs 10 times the average household income. So that's what you have to fix. You have to build more houses. You named the figures earlier. So for every 150 people, only 80 houses built. That's simply not acceptable. So we should actually try to find ways to release more land for development. We have to relax our um, building rules. We have to uh, basically abolish height and density control and we have to find different ways of financing infrastructure. And if we do all of that at the same time, we have a very good chance of actually creating, uh, creating the housing that the country needs and fixing our crisis in the housing market. No, but do you think we can fix this quickly? I'm, I'm not sure. And all the politicians I've, I've, I've had on this programme, no one says it's a quick fix. Nobody's saying we can fix this in the short term. 
um, I think we can actually be, uh, build credible expectations that we will flood the market with new housing if we all really want it. And that would um, change the uh, dynamic of the market once the expectation is there that you shouldn't just sit back and speculate on ever-rising house prices, because a lot of that is expectation-driven. If you think that in the future no government will ever do anything about it, of course it is prudent to go into the market and just bet on it. But once you actually see credible signals from politicians that we're actually getting serious, tackling that crisis, the speculative element of it will just disappear. Good on you, Oliver. Always appreciate your time on the programme. Well said, well done. Uh, Oliver Hartwich. Uh